Well, folks, another December has reared its ugly head, and with another December comes the most dreaded part of this website's calendar, the YouTube Rewind. Now, there's, well, quite a bit I'd like to discuss about the Rewind, last year's in particular, but I think I'll save that for later in this little rant. In the meantime, I'd like to discuss what has happened on this website in the intervening year that I find to be significant or noteworthy. The big thing that has affected YouTube over the past few weeks is that the Federal Trade Commission decided that YouTube has been illegally collecting the personal data of children under 13 thanks to the innumerable amount of kids-oriented videos, whether they be learn rhyme color videos, or finger family videos, or other crap like that. Google was fined for $170 million for violating the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, or COPPA and they are told to start policing videos uploaded to their service to determine whether they remain for children. The problem is that the rules in COPPA are very ambiguous at best when it comes to certain kinds of content, especially video games, which are still massive on this website. It doesn't help that both the FTC and YouTube have made conflicting statements on the matter that have just caused even more confusion. YouTube's ever-loved algorithm has been introduced into the mix, which automatically flagged videos as for kids. That may not seem so bad on the surface, but videos that are marked as made for kids are pretty much completely neutered. Starting January 1st, all personalized advertising will be taken away, which pretty much reduces the ad revenue going to a creator by up to 90% in some cases. Also, comments on these videos will be disabled, subscribers won't be notified of those videos, and you won't be able to save them to any playlists. If the FTC investigates you and finds that your videos or channel have been incorrectly marked, they have the power to fine you up to $42,350 per video, which means you may potentially owe millions to the FTC if you screw up badly. Understandably, this has caused a lot of panic, but personally I do not believe that the FTC would impose a fine so large on an individual. Personally. Since I'm pretty sure that the FTC cannot punish people outside the US, I have set my channel's audience to be not for kids. Worryingly, however, YouTube have also implied that people who set the audience incorrectly may also face consequences on YouTube itself, which may pretty much doom this YouTube channel to be honest. A lot of my videos, particularly my Christmas specials, may be seen by YouTube or the FTC as directed toward children. Considering that teens are a large part of my audience, I may be in a lot of trouble, to put it in bluntly. In the future, I may have to age restrict or even delete even more of my older videos, including my older Christmas specials, if things go south. But the FTC is open to comments regarding this new change. If you live in the United States, I implore you, I beg you, to leave a comment on the regulations.gov page for COPPA and try to convince them that this will pretty much ruin YouTube for a lot of people and lead to a huge amount of ambiguity and confusion for everyone involved, the FTC included. Please hurry, as the window for commenting closes on December 9th and you won't have a lot of time. The link to the comments page is at the top of the description. Alright, that's enough about COPPA. Let's talk about quote unquote hate speech. This year, I've noticed that YouTube has been seriously cracking down on videos that it considers to be hate speech. This would be all fine and dandy, but as a result, YouTube has removed and demonetized many videos about modern history, especially involving the horrific events that took place during World War II. My history teacher had a bad experience in regards to this recently. They had told me that they had tried to show their class an educational video about a certain event that took place during World War II only to find that that video had been taken down and the channel had been terminated. Many other creators that educate about modern history have also had their channels demonetized for ser similar reasons. Yes, hate speech is a terrible thing, and I do believe that it should be removed if it is especially serious. But when you start to remove legitimate, factually accurate and neutral sources of information and claim that it was a form of hate speech, that is when you go too far. Something that may seem minor to a lot of users, but has really, really irritated me is the abbreviation of subscriber counts. Until September 17th, you could see the precise subscriber counts of a channel by just going to that channel's user page. On September 17th, however, 
YouTube pushed an API update that abbreviates these counts to only the three most significant digits. For example, a subscriber count of 12,345,678 would now appear as 12.3M. This change has happened at the API level, which means that even the website Social Blade, which tracks the statistics of users on various social media networks, was affected by this change, effectively destroying half of its purpose. I strongly believe that Social Blade should have initiated an unfair competition lawsuit against YouTube when they implemented this change, as although Social Blade is not strictly for YouTube, it was probably their main source of traffic, especially during the first few months of this year. YouTube's reasoning for this change has never really held water for me either. They said it was to relieve stress from major content creators and to help mitigate cancel culture, which is where a significant number of users unsubscribe from a creator because they have done something majorly wrong. An example of this in the past year was Pro Jared, who was wrongly accused of grooming a child. And he lost, I think, 400,000 subscribers or something? Yeah. But let's face it. The real reason behind this change was to prevent another subscriber competition event, like the T-Series vs PewDiePie one from early on in the year. I won't really go into this since everybody and their grandmother has heard at least something about it, but PewDiePie ultimately lost the battle. He currently still sits in second place with approximately 102 million subscribers, while T-Series is at fast approaching 121 million as of December 2nd. I will state, however, that this whole subscriber contest thing had definitely made me change my opinion on PewDiePie. I really used to hate him, especially after he had uploaded a video of him supposedly smashing the play button he got for reaching 50 million in 2017, but although I never actually watched the video in fairness, I am a lot more forgiving to him now, and I do think that he's a pretty good guy, if a little misunderstood at times. Yeah, he has landed the site in hot water in the past, but if you ask me, he is pretty much one of the few creators that are still keeping the site relevant to me going forward into 2020. Speaking of which, yes, it's time to talk about the Rewind. It's inevitable, and I predict it's going to be an absolute crap fest when it comes out in the next few days. If I could sum up last year's Rewind in three seconds, it would be this scene. How the actual fuck could you think that releasing this radioactive sludge of a video to the masses was even a good, or even a bad idea? The 2018 Rewind was absolutely atrocious. The 2017 Rewind was pretty bad, but last year's Rewind makes it look like the Shawshank Redemption in comparison. How could Google, having lost so much touch with its billion plus strong audience, while simultaneously being unable to not fix things that aren't broken with its website in general, possibly have even allowed the thought that this could have worked out well for them. No! This thing was an absolute travesty, and the fact that it even exists and is still available to force your eyes and ears to be tortured by on YouTube is a massive disgrace to the human race. Alright, alright, let's calm down. The main problem with YouTube Rewind is that it is plainly obvious that YouTube is completely and knowingly ignorant of what people actually want from YouTube and it's merely celebrations of the platform. For one thing, last year's Rewind was hardly even about YouTube itself. Most of it the celebrities featured are not even prominent on YouTube. The first person that even appeared in it was Will Smith, who has practically no relation with YouTube whatsoever aside from his music being uploaded there. Ninja, who was a popular streamer on Twitch for the extremely popular video game that I will not name, has practically no presence on YouTube whatsoever either. It actually just felt like a disorganized mess that had a huge amount of celebrity cameos just so that the rewind would seem more, even more relatable to the general populace as a result. It was just absolutely ridiculous, and it just made the video seem incredibly awkward to a lot of people, including me. Another major problem with the Rewind was that it was infuriatingly safe. The company needed to appease the lusty advertisers after all, and making yourself look good in public image is a surefire way to swoon them and fire ads and sponsorship royalties directly at your face. They tried to push the image that anyone can become a successful creator no matter their race, gender, sexual orientation, or even species, when this has been exposed as absolutely false 
by several great researchers into the YouTube's demonetization system. They present this argument with the LGBT crowd in the Rewind, for instance, while YouTube in the background continues to ACTIVELY DEMONETIZE AND CENSOR LGBT CONTENT from their platform, which is abhorrently disingenuous on YouTube's part and should be the subject of a discrimination case against them. I think this year's Rewind should celebrate the fierce, fabulous, and empowering art of drag. Lastly, the acting of the in of the influencers featured in this video was, well, not very good, to put it bluntly. All the actors were just really bad, and it just lowered the quality of the production along with all the bizarrely overemphasized lighting effects and disjointed video editing the Rewind was shambled together with. It was plainly obvious that what all the celebrities were stating were not representi representative of their IRL personalities, which made them all seem like they were severely out of character for the entirety of the video. Their lines were delivered with as little emotion as possible, and overall it just felt like I was watching a corporate promotion video for the platform when it was supposed to be a celebration of YouTube in 2018. And believe me, these problems have not gone unnoticed. Oh no, not by a long shot. Ah, oh, that's hot. That's hot. Deservedly, the Rewind has become the most disliked video on the platform by a country mile. As of December 1st, it has just a hair under 17 million dislikes, beating the second most disliked video, the official music video for Justin Bieber's Baby, by over 6 million. And the one, and only time I watched the Rewind before I wrote the script of this video, I could not even stomach to watch the whole thing. I had never even watched the last minute and a half of the thing until now. Once the baby shark scene started, I actually felt that I was going to get sick. It's a shame too, as from what I've read on the internet, the closing credits of the Rewind are actually pretty great compared to the rest of the video, as it contained a few cameos from animators that people on the site actually care about. The ASMR fetish stuff in the background of the credits is very off-putting though. Personally, I think the only redeeming thing that the Rewind had was that it introduced me to Lucas the Spider, and Robert, who has appeared on a few of my older videos, more coming at some point or another, apparently really likes the little guy. Can't really blame him for that, but I digress. I know there are a lot of important things I haven't touched on about YouTube in this video, but with the Day of Reckoning fast approaching, I might as well get this video out before it's too late. Let's just say that the next few days are going to be pretty interesting for the site. Hell, we might not even get a rewind at all this year. Of course, I'm not saying that'd be a bad thing given the quality of the previous ones, but there's only one way to find out. Also, in last year's video I made predicting the 2018 rewind, I said this. As of right now, the US national debt is about 21.8 trillion US dollars. That is a lot of money. I would bet the entire national debt of the United States that this dance is going to be somehow incorporated into the rewind. I'm still waiting for that 21.8 trillion dollars, YouTube. You lost the bet, so you'd better pay up. I'll wait until the heat death of the universe if I have to. But you're gonna have to pay your debts. Eventually.